This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Hello, welcome to Stockbox. Plantar PLC have recently announced that they've fundraised £450,000. Now, here to tell us more is David Horan, the chairman of Clontarf PLC. Hi, David. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you today. Great. Uh, and thanks for the uh, opportunity to uh, fill in shareholders about recent developments. Wonderful. Well, we spoke to you recently and discussed the developments with Clontarf and how Bolivia have committed themselves to accelerating lithium exports through policy changes. So before we talk about um, you know the recent raise that you've had, um, let's just let's just have a have a look at, at how that's going. So when we last spoke, the plan moving forward, the next steps was you were looking to collect samples by October 2024. Um, is that still on schedule? Yes, uh, there's been some changes to their schedule. Really, nothing to do with us or even the lithium bid round process. To do with uh, other immediate problems that the the ministry and believe has had to do with basically a diesel shortage, which uh, has got tangled up in lithium politics in, in various ways. But basically, uh, we expect uh, to be in formal negotiations by uh, the middle of October. But in the meantime, we're ex- trying to expedite the collection of the bulk samples. These are very large samples, like 320 tons is a lot. And uh, they've really agreed a principle to this. Uh, and we're trying to expedite that. Now, under law, ideally, they should be collected by the Bolivian National Lithium Company, and uh, we will pay any royalty if there's royalty, and we'll we'll pay for any expenses getting to the seaport, etc. But uh, they should do the documentation as they've done before. Now, just last September, they gave us 240 kilos, and it worked really well. It took them about a month, so we don't think it'll, it'll be long delayed. Uh, and obviously, it's in their interest too, because they want they plan to run the production testing. They want to go and visit the plant, and they want us to deploy a plant, a bigger plant, to Bolivia before the next election, which is in August, and our plan is to get it there by mid next year. Right. So originally when we spoke, we talked about you collecting these samples in October to be shipped to the Mumbai plant. Um, is that is that still on track? Yes. For it, to, for it to be going to Mumbai? Yes. And obviously we're trying to expedite it, but you know, there's 21 companies involved in the process and uh, they, they don't have sufficient uh, human resources to deal with the complexity of, of multiple negotiations. Uh, so we're trying to advance pragmatically and we've done it before. We did get bulk samples before. Very few companies, if any, did. So I'm confident we'll do it again. Yeah. And so what's the logistical challenges there, David? Because as you mentioned, you're looking at quite a large samples. Um, you know, are there export permits in place? What are you doing to mitigate any delays at borders? If, it, if it's, as you mentioned, 21 companies are, uh, are working together in this, is it is this something that then you're cracking together or do you need to do your own separate permits? Well, we've moved faster than the others because we've been involved in Bolivia for longer. And this is you know, the fourth or fifth uh, sampling campaign we've been on. Uh, if you're taking on small sample quantities, it's not a big deal. Like you can organize it through one of the labs like ALS, sent it to Vancouver or Brisbane. It's not a big deal. But when you're moving 320 tonnes, uh, it's obviously much more visible mm. and the narcotics people will be taking samples and all the rest of it. That's fine. Uh, so the best way to do it is with the cooperation of the state lithium company, which has drill rigs. Where we don't know confirmation which depth and which uh, wells will be taking the sample from, but it's a good discipline to have a, a, a variation in the sample given the size of the sample. Uh, and we'll be taking it from two salaries, one high grade, low magnesium, one um, moderately high grade and uh, higher magnesium. And that's to stress test the technology, the ionic separation technology that we've developed with our joint venture partner. And they're very much bought into that. I mean, they see the logic of what we're trying to do. Also, they're quite attracted by the fact that we're not just focusing on taking out the lithium, like all the other companies are. We're also interested in taking out other economic mineral, particularly magnesium, because you can see magnesium as a problem or you can see it as an opportunity. And we'd rather profit from it as an opportunity. Why would you see it as a problem? Because it's deleterious in batteries. Uh, if you follow in the news about uh, the Lebanese pager attack, you know people are understandably sensitive about lithium-ion batteries, mm-hmm. even on aircraft. And the reason lithium itself is quite reactive, but in a battery, it should be perfectly stable. 
provided that the impurities are kept very low. If they're not kept very low, what can happen is as your battery is charged and discharged, charged and discharged, very tiny salt crystals can form within the battery. And if the impurity level is too high, that can ultimately break through a membrane, which can short circuit the battery and cause a fire. And a lithium ion battery fire in, say, a Japanese car carrier is not a happy thing because they burn at 1500 degrees Celsius and they can mm -hmm. be very difficult to put out on a vessel. Uh, therefore, there's a big drive in the industry to increase the purity of the chemicals going into the lithium ion battery, which uh, should eliminate the risk of fire. Wonderful. So let's bring it back to um, your, your recent RNS. You've raised £450,000. Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, this um, was really opportunistic because when we last spoke, I think uh, I, I was asked about the interims and we had cash, right. uh, adequate cash for the, the next phase, which is true. Uh, but just on, uh, on the Friday, uh, we got a briefing from the EU Commission and they'd been tipped off about uh, an issue with the um, the Russian company raising raising concerns about some of the European companies not being funded for their initial uh, pilot plant. Now, the logic of this is for production, that shouldn't be a problem because the off-takers will take title to the off-take and they will fund the production plants and working capital. So that's not a problem. For the infrastructure, the EU has already offered funding to the Bolivian government to put in roads and water and power connections and so on. So that should not be a problem, obviously, mm -hmm. subject to credit committee. But there is a, a, a intermediary stage where you're deploying the larger pilot plant to site, and that's not yet production volume. So that wouldn't be covered by the offtake, but it still would involve you know some millions of expense between us and our joint venture partner. Now, we've always known that was an issue, and we were reluctant to fund in the short term because we didn't need the money. Uh, you're always reluctant you know, to fund at low market cap. On the other hand, once we were tipped off that the Russians were raising this as an issue with the Bolivian state, of course, it's not an issue for them because they, they're state back. They have lots of cash, neither for the Chinese. It is a fair question. So we thought rather than uh, try and mumble a, um, a half thought through response, it made the most sense to say it with cash. Since we were being plied with offers for cash and we were offered cash within an hour by someone we've known for some time, Access Capital, uh, we agreed to take it. Now, in a perfect world, uh, you wouldn't. But if you're named junior, you know, you're not your mother's favorite uh, Siamese cat. Uh, you have to act a bit like an alley cat and you've got to be flexible because mm. there's nothing worse than running out of capital when you need it. So you saw an opportunity there. It was, as you mentioned, it was within the hour. Um, and you've taken that. And, you know, how, so let's, let's just break down exactly how will that money be used? Well, that money will be deployed in uh, ordering long lead items and buying the items that will be used to assemble a bigger plant. Like it's basically 10 times the size of the original pilot plant. This is what you do. You start off at the lab, you go to a small pilot plant, and then you scale it up because there's always issue with scaling. Uh, the plant we're assembling in Bolivia won't be the ultimate scale, which will be bigger, but it will be modular. And uh, it, basically what we're doing is we're following the request and recommendation for scale that the Bolivians have given to all the companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, that requires obviously 10 times the amount of equipment as the original pilot plant. And that requires ordering long lead items now, which are basically sensors and membranes. And we've been lucky, the Glaze have actually helped us there because initially we were going to buy expensive membranes in Germany mm -hmm. uh, and sensors in Germany, which are still the best sensors. But we found that actually the subcontractor in India has developed independently an excellent membrane technology, which has twice the surface area of the membranes that we were previously using at much the same cost. And that was totally unexpected. And that reduces the capex, particularly in the first phase of taking out the uh, magnesium. So uh, that's an unexpected prize, but it does mean that we have to commit orders and we have to put down a deposit. And that's why we need some cash. And you also say in your RNS, and I quote, that you expect to propose an early deployment of a bespoke pilot plant to one or more Bolivian salars as soon as permits are issued and details are agreed. So what permits do you need to have in place here and what details are you looking to agree? Well, all the permitting is being organised by the State Lithium Company, which is obviously part of the government. And they, uh, we haven't had any problems ourselves, but uh, there's always issues with local community because the local community is understandably concerned about possible freshwater use in a water-stressed area. 
and I agree with them. You know, uh, if I were them, I, I would be concerned too. But our water use with ionic separation technology is quite limited. Like basically, we will take the water from the brine itself. The residue, which we think will be 95% of the original brine, will be re-injected back into the salar at a different level. Very much like re-injecting a brine from an oil and gas well. And the Bolivians are very familiar with this technology because they've been a producer for 100 years of oil and gas. And that's the answer to the local community. And uh, the the issue that they see with fresh water is, is an issue with some of the companies, uh, including a French company, we understand, and the Russians. It isn't a, a problem with our ionic separation technology. And uh, that's why we're not concerned about that. Uh, but still, you want you, everywhere in the world now, you've got to have proper ESG. That's no different in yes. India or Africa or South America. Mm -hmm. uh, the days when companies could play fast and loose with environmental rules are long gone, and we wouldn't want to anyway. Mm -hmm. And you know, ours is a green technology. Why not use that as a benefit? And uh, we hope to get a premium in the market because European off-takers are looking for green raw materials, not just competitive raw materials. Wonderful. And as we've spoken about this before, David, that's exactly what you are doing with Clontarf. Um, but it's great to speak to you today. And no doubt we'll be speaking to you again soon as we continue to uh, follow the development at Clontarf. But thank you for taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you, Pam. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stopboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.